What's up my friend? How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Today I'm just going to do some DIYs, but um, I'm not in the mood. I'm a little tired. We'll get to them in the next video. Today I do have a fun video because I want to talk about, I guess, nine DIYs that I think are really cool and maybe I'll do them in the future. Maybe I won't. We'll find out, but uh, let's just get into it. Of course, I got my list. Also, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jorge, and I love all things home decor, DIYs, vintage shopping, all of that stuff. And so, um, if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and do it. Okay, let's talk about banquette seating. I really like banquette seating. I, when I go to a restaurant or a coffee shop, that's where I'm heading because I like to snuggle in, get comfortable, put my feet. I'm just kidding, I'm not putting my feet up, but I really like that because it just. I don't know, there's something about them. And so when I see them in homes, I really like them. Now, when I think of them also, I kind of think of like the 80s for some reason, like 80s home banquettes. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this newer, more modern style of them. And of course I do see them in very traditional sort of spaces, but I think something like this can also be made a little bit more modern. Maybe we can have some fun with sort of the backing that we put, but still making it comfortable, of course. One example that I can think of is 136 Home. Um, his name is Anthony. I'll put his handle here. Um, basically, he has a beautiful um, banquette area, a beautiful home in general, by the way, and this use of this awesome uh, color. What is that color like? Kind of mustard, not really mustard. But this is a beautiful banquette. Look at the strap details on the backing and then this nice sort of brass rod, something different. And I think we could have some fun with banquette seating. Of course, those are also great because you can really maximize space, especially if you are tight on space and really are looking to seat more people. And you could just do like a round table, put some chairs on the back, throw in some pillows, call it a day. And of course you can do the DIY built-in version. That is something that I definitely wanna do. I don't think this is the house for it, but hopefully in the future I can do that. But there's also like pre-made furniture that you can kind of put together and make sort of a banquette seating style. Definitely something to check out and maybe do some like, a, you know, uh, what is it called? Uh, leather. Why can't I think of it? Leather and maybe do something kind of fun with that. You can do sort of a nice fluted detail. So many possibilities with banquette seating. Think of it as kind of like you're in a high-end bar or a restaurant and you know those high-end banquette seats. You can do that at home if you DIY it. Hmm. Hopefully I have an opportunity to do that in the future. Would love to try it out. Anyways, that's that. Oh, here's a fun one. How about some DIY large mirrors? Now, mirrors can be kind of expensive, especially if they are like large, you know, floor length mirrors that lean on the wall. That can be pretty heavy too. Um, and of course, there's those beautiful ones from, you know, RH, Anthropology, all of those kinds of spaces, uh, stores. They are very beautiful and the great thing about large mirrors is that can really reflect light, make a space feel larger and kind of create some dimension. Of course, they can be expensive. So one thing that you could do um, and actually have seen done is you can go to like Home Depot or Lowe's or you know, whatever store and get like a large vanity mirror, just like a simple mirror. I've seen the largest one for like less than $60. Um, maybe I'll link it below, but such a good way to save some money. And then you can of course make your own frame for it. Now I actually have a video on uh, mirrors that I recently shared, a DIY video. Um, I'll link it for you too. But there's so many ways that you can make frames for mirrors. You can look up videos on like making frames or what have you. Get some appliques if you like the really scrolly look, more ornate mirrors. But sometimes it's kind of easier to just buy large mirrors. I've seen some pretty affordable floor length mirrors um, that can look really nice and modern if that's your thing. One cool hack, one that I actually did in my apartment and I wish I would have taken photos but I wasn't sharing content at the time but you know when you rent a space and they have or maybe you, like when you have a house there's just like the basic vanity mirror as I t just shared. If you don't want to replace it you can kind of just put like a nice simple modern mirror around not mirror uh, frame around it using some wood. Maybe I'll put some photos here of ones that I maybe I find online, but such a simple way to transform a mirror without having to unmount it even. But anyways, 
Mirrors. Mirrors are large, mirrors are cool, mirrors are nice. You know what I'm realizing? I think I talk a lot with my hands. I used to not do that, but um, just as a precaution, everybody stay away because I might poke you, <laughs> poke you in the eye as I make these videos. <laughs> Anyways, this next hack or DIY, no, it's a hack, I would say. I discovered it on TikTok. On the rare occasions that I get on TikTok, this is actually by Danielle. I'll put her handle here, definitely go check her out. Um, essentially, it's a wall plate cover hack. So, with wall outlets, they even if you have a really nice space, if you have old dated uh, outlets, outlet covers, that could really like kill the vibe, you know? And oftentimes when I've rented, they have this like yellow, crusty outlets that are kind of scary to be honest with. I think this hack is really cool because it's like this plate cover. I think it's a couple bucks. You can get it at Lowe's, at Home Depot. I actually found it at Lowe, uh, Home Depot. I'll link it for you. You can just take the existing old uh, cover and you can just put this over it and you do not need to replace the actual outlet part. Um, which requires an electrician, or maybe you can do it if you're handy, but like be safe. But this does re not require an electrician. All you gotta do is uncover or remove the plate, put the new one on there. Such a cool hack. Seriously, mind blowing. Okay, let's cover up that radiator. To be honest with you, I've never seen a radiator in my life. And I'm talking about those ones like in apartments. I've seen lots of cool hacks for that, kind of making, um, furniture to cover them but you still want to have airflow through them so I've seen this like really cool one where they take some cane if you're into cane kind of take an Ikea cabinet I think or something like that and kind of basically just use the skeleton of the cabinet and put some cane on there there you have it another thing that I also saw is to kind of just embrace it they're kind of really cool in my opinion but if you have them maybe you don't think they're cool anymore but I think they're kind of cool embrace it have a console put it over it that kind of wraps around it and kind of just create a little moment with that such a cool way to uh, work with radiators radiators let's talk wainscoting i really like wainscoting it's definitely on trend right now even though i think it's timeless i think it's pretty popular right now lots of diyers bloggers are doing it and i'm here for it i personally don't know if this is the right space for it. Uh, hopefully I can do it in the future, but wainscot is kind of cool. It dates back, I don't know, a few centuries ago or something like that. It was originally, I think, used in like stone buildings um, to sort of contain heat. Contemporary and current times definitely used in all sorts of design. And this can really go pretty modern or it can go very traditional or somewhere in the middle. Now for me, if I were to do this, I would do this in a more modern way. Now I have seen sort of these spaces that I'm sharing here, very cool. And I really like just the simplicity of it. Sometimes, especially if you're gonna be using wood, which I really like, I probably would do like maybe um, oak or something like that. It's all about kind of just embracing the material and just keeping it simple. Now, I think what I would do is I would go to the local lumber yard and pick up some plywood, some thin plywood, and maybe, you know, there's they sell all sorts of different uh, types of wood veneers, plywoods, um, and I would just do that. Would this be kind of a pricey project? It might be. Uh, so maybe I would do this in a smaller room, like a bathroom. Can you imagine a powder room? How cool would that be? Now with wainscoting, you might assume it's only if you like own a house or can like actually do something to a space. You can actually DIY it. In fact, I've seen a couple people DIY them in their renter spaces. One example I can think of is DIY Dahlia. Go check out her channel if you haven't already. She did this really cool sort of wainscoting in her apartment. So, so many ways that you can go about this. I for sure like the look of the natural wood, but you can definitely paint as well. Now, how high should you install this if you're gonna do it? You're gonna get different answers from different sources. For a general rule of thumb, something that I have seen the most is about one third. One third is the ideal height for you and it might depend on the height of your space and all that. Another thing that I have seen is the two thirds going pretty high up, kind of up to the doorway. An example that I can think of is Haunting Home. Um, somebody I follow, Montana, over on Instagram. She, her dining room, or I think, uh, I think it's her dining room, she does an amazing way of installing it. It's such a cool, 
really just like transforms spaces. It really does. So wainscoting, I'm here for it. Let's do it. Per usual, the sun is setting, so I better hurry. Now, let's talk about wall niches. Wall niches are freaking cool. One of my favorite probably architectural details. Now, when I think of wall niches, I kind of think of, you know, Gothic churches or just historic buildings, very ornate, but when I think of them, I also think of just minimalism. Minimalism in a way that um, you have just very simple shapes. For example, an arch niche is one that I really like. But there's, you know, you can have square or rectangles, what have you. And I really like these because they can make a space feel more intentional. Now, not only can you just use them to display like something precious, like a, a vase, a sculpture, or what have you, art but you can also kind of leave them empty and kind of embrace the minimalism. So that's one thing that I think is cool. Is if you're looking to maybe update a space, this probably means cutting into the wall, but nothing too crazy. Um, but definitely something to think about. These are not just for bathroom or showers. They can be used in at the end of the hallway, in a bedroom, in a living room, dining room, what have you. But Definitely loving these. I personally think would lime wash this and kind of integrate it into the wall. I would not paint this another color. I probably would do white and kind of just embrace the minimal space. Can you just imagine Venetian plaster? Oh, that would look really good in a niche. Let me know, do you like niches? I know that they were kind of used back in the day for like, you know, those um, telepho telephones? Telephones, yes, telephones with like the cords. Um, anyways. Niches, I'm here for it, I'm loving it. Do you like it? You know, since we're already here, I'm gonna do my shameless plug and invite you to go check out my website, casarefine.com, where I'm sharing home decor content, content that does not end up here on the channel. Uh, I'm always finding really cool, awesome deals online and I share those there. Go there, sign up for my newsletter. I'm gonna be sending one out soon and kind of just get the ball rolling with that. But definitely go check out over there because this is the party that's the after party or the other way around. Next up, let's talk about cement tiles. I think we could DIY them. Now, cement tiles, when I think of them, I think of Spanish style tile. Spanish, Spanish style tiles. You know, lots of pattern, um, very kind of Moroccan. And I think these are beautiful. You can, of course, bring them with color. You can just keep it black and white, which I really like. And so these are beautiful, but they're kind of expensive. They're kind of expensive. I remember working on a project um, in one of the firms I worked it with that uh, we used it in like this Hollywood 1920s house. Beautiful, but very expensive. But I think we could DIY it, right? I can imagine using this um, buying a bag of cement and I don't know, maybe this is not the right way to do it. Maybe I'm advising the wrong thing here, but maybe you can buy a bag of cement uh, you can get like a 55 pound one for like 25 bucks or something at home depot and then get some molds order some on etsy i found some really cool ones i found these sort of scalloped ones how cool would these be maybe use some like dark or charcoal sort of color add some pigment and i do a lot of cement diys here on this channel you can definitely add color to these uh, maybe i'll link some of the molds that i found for you and you don't necessarily need to go crazy with this and cover your whole kitchen floor or whatever. Maybe just keep it in a powder room or I don't know, what have you. There's so much possibility from DIYing. Now, of course, you do need some time for this to be able to make so many different um, cement tiles, but I guess that kind of speaks to why they're kind of expensive. But I don't know, maybe we can DIY them or not, or not. <laughs> This one's really good if you're looking to add architectural interest to your space, whether you are renting or you're a homeowner. Now, fireplaces. Fireplaces I love because not only are they like the hearth of a home, of a space, but they are attractive. They're good to look at. They're great opportunities for decorating too. Now, if you are renting, you can make a, or even if you're a homeowner, you can create a fake one. Now, making sure that it integrates with the rest of the space is important. That could potentially mean using the same colors or materials as the space that it's in. Then I've seen this done a couple of different ways and some of them kind of go wrong, but some that I really like um, and, and kind of just depends on the fireplace insert. You can get some online that are electrical, nothing, you don't need like, a, you don't need to glue anything structural to your space. You kind of just like plug it in. It's kind of like a, wall heater. Sometimes you can just get the visual effect, what have you, and some of them don't look very real. 
I don't know, it's all personal preference, but creating a nice surround. I've seen some nice modern minimal, minimalistic ones done with like uh, a plastered finish at the end, or you can make one with just drywall, keeping it very simple, very minimal. Black and steel is one of my ones that, I, it's a personal goal of mine. I want a black and steel fireplace at some point. Um, but so many ways that you can go about this. You can also just leave the actual fireplace um, insert empty. Just paint it black or maybe put some bricks to give it the illusion of it being real. Of course, don't use it because you'll burn down the space. Put some fire logs in there, put some flameless candles and call it good. But so much potential with these faux fireplaces and they even sell just mantles. I've seen some nice ones on Etsy that kind of have just this nice look to it. You don't even need to do anything. Just put them on a wall and decorate them and kind of just embrace sort of that architectural quality to them. Fireplaces, let's do it. Here's a fun one, fluted furniture um, or just fluted anything in general. I have seen this a lot, very trending right now. I think I'm the last person that hasn't done it, but I wanna try it out and more my aesthetic, I would say, because I feel like this is heavily used in sort of that modern boho style. This isn't really boho, but anyways, I think something like this is nice. It's simple to do, simple to DIY. You can take any furniture. There's Ikea hacks that you can do with this. You can put this on a wall, create a whole wall with like the fluting detail, create some interest. But I kind of want to do like a modern pedestal or something like that. Let me know, do you want to see something like that? Because I want to do it. Um, and we can definitely keep this simple. We don't need to overdo it. We don't need to put it everywhere, but I think uh, some fluted furniture, a piece here and there, I think it's okay. Why not? Why not? But let me know, are you into the fluted decor or are you over it? Is it on its way out? I don't know. I don't know, how long has it been around for? I mean, it's been around for a while, but like, it kind of blew up last year. Well, I think that's all. Yep, that's all. Anyways, um, yeah, I had fun talking about this. Sometimes it's kind of fun to, just to talk rather than DIY. I'm not gonna lie, DIYing is very time consuming. So um, anyways, I'm very excited about these types of DIY. It's so nice seeing people kind of going out there, getting creative and saving some money and just making their space more unique, making them more themselves. And so let me know, are any of these things that you have done in the past or are you interested in doing? Did I miss anything? Let me know, I definitely would. But um, yeah, thank you for hanging out with me. I had lots of fun. I'm gonna put some other videos here that I keep rambling uh, <laughs> that you might be interested in checking out or DIYs, you know, I do a lot of that here. But thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm gonna go. The sun actually already set, but here we are. Have an amazing day. I'm gonna see you in the next video. Bye.